um, my thumb, it's like it's progressing in its discomfort. It's more uncomfortable. It hurts. It's clicking more. Um, I get up in the so morning. If I remember right, when we were talking about last time, like there's starting to be, there was also some like body inflammation that was happening as well. That's been uh, ongoing for a couple of months now. Um, it, it's actually better, okay. but it's still there. It's better, uh, but it's my thumb though. It's like, so I wonder, it, my doctor thinks if it's a nodule. Um, if it is, it's very small, but there is a very, very tender spot. Um, I'm wondering if I can get around not doing the little procedure for it, which is not a big deal as I understand. So it is clicking. It's absolutely clicking and for, I can push it through so that it opens up. But if I don't move it, like when I sleep, I don't move it in the morning. It's, it's like stone solid in one it either open or closed it doesn't even matter which position it is it's not consistent and so we did like we had you use like eucalyptus citrodora or lovage or arthrocare or something and you rubbed it on did that have any impact at all um what you had me do was the lemongrass because you said let's focus on the lymph problem that you saw in my body okay but um I don't, I, um, I, you said you didn't think it was so much my finger or you couldn't see it. Yeah, I, I think, okay. So let, let's do this. So um, that the inflammation is going down in parts of your body, but, but this part is still staying. Let's treat it as the, the crystalline deposits on the tendon and sheath where, um, I mean, anytime you have the clicking, the, the issue that I was concerned about was that you were feeling like that kind of nerve kind of pain in the middle of the thumb pad. And it clicks, right? It's the, it, no, it's in the, the first joint is the joint that clicks with the first joint. You thought it was lower in the thumb, uh -huh. the lower in the thumb, maybe where the nodule is. Okay. But the clicking is, is more toward the nail. It's on the, that joint. Okay. It was funny. So I saw my, um, my medical doctor mm -hmm. uh, yesterday mm -hmm. and I said, you know, I had my clairvoyant friend look at, look at this. He didn't see anything. He said, I never thought he was going to say this. He said, did you tell him it might be a nodule so you could look for the nodule? That blew my socks <laughs> off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's super funny. Yes. Well, let, let's do, let's do this. Like, let's explore. Do you have um, eucalyptus citradora? I do have or it. Okay, you do. So uh, like that, and you can rotate with any form of lovage, either the leaf or the root. Um, you can do the citradora by itself, or if you want to mix a little helichrysum with it, you could do that. But I'd probably do the citradora right off the bat just by itself. And then after a few times, you can do equal parts, uh, eucalyptus citradora and helichrysum. And I, I wouldn't even put it in a massage oil or liniment. I would just do neat and I'd like, you know, hit the jump, th jump, the <laughs> thumb, and then jump up to the, the, the forearm and, yeah. and work the forearm, especially like if you see like this part, like if you follow the thumb, like that side of the forearm, like really rub it into there and do it like a couple of times a day. Okay. So, sometimes the the issue is that um, there can be just like these little pieces of debris. There could be um, uh, crystalline deposits. Um, sometimes in extreme cases, the tendon like frays a little bit, and then it get, keeps getting stuck in the sheath. That's a that's a hard one to resolve. But still, reducing the inflammation is your best bet, and it can make it. I mean, I've had several cases where that was the case that we were able to 
unwinded enough to where, you know, surgery wasn't necessary. But um, uh, a lot of times they don't know that until they've either done an MRI or they like open you up. And so, um, you know, I always try to avoid surgeries if possible. And so, um, you know, it's just another stress on the body. I mean, if it needs to happen, it needs to happen. But, um, you know, try to exhaust all options before the surgery. And so let's have you go pretty hard with this. The thing that's nice about eucalyptus citradora is it is an anti-inflammatory and it helps to break up like potential like deposits and, and debris and things. And so let's let's give that a shot. And the lovage? The same thing, yeah. Um, not as much uh, of an anti-inflammatory, um, a little bit more for the for the deposits. But um, you know, if there's deposits, there's inflammation, and so I usually like kind of mix them. But right off the bat, I would just go with the citrador, just hard, really, really quickly for a day or two. Then start mixing the either the helichrysum, or you can mix the. Um, the helichrysum and the citradora is a very good anti-inflammatory for tendons. Like it is really good for tendonitis. Um, the, the lovage with the eucalyptus citradora is more for deposits. Like it's good for deposits and joints, deposits in the tendon and sheath, things like that. Not as much for inflammation though. Okay, so I do the eucalyptus. I just keep massaging that on, I do it straight. I go not only where it's uncomfortable and so forth, I'll go I'll down my arm, arm. Yeah. follow it up the arm. Okay, and I do that as often as I do it for two days. And the lovage I do also, but separately. I, I would probably wait with the lovage for about four days out. Okay. Like I would do eucalyptus citradora. And then um, after maybe two days, do citradora with um, helichrysum. Do that for a couple of days. And then after that, you could still continue those or you can drop those and go to the lovage. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's how I would treat it. Okay, super. And um, then keep us posted. I will, thank you very much. Hey, tell Dave hi.